Every winter, the entire volume of Cayuga Lake cools off. And by very early in the winter, the entire two and a half trillion gallons that makes up Cayuga Lake is at 39 degrees. Wouldn't it be great if you could somehow capture the cold winter weather in Ithaca and use that on the hottest days of summer to cool buildings? Turns out you can do that on Cayuga Lake. It's so deep that an enormous volume of the lake, over 80% of it, stays cold all summer long. And you can bring that deep water up and use it through a heat exchange process to move heat naturally from buildings out to the environment. And Lake Source Cooling is exactly that. It's basically using that stored cooling effect that's there from such a long, cold winter. We can use it all summer long, allowing us to cool both the university facilities and Ithaca High School. Lake Source Cooling uses cold water from deep in Cayuga Lake to cool buildings on the Cornell campus. Lake water is not pumped up to the campus. Rather, a closed loop system of piping called the Campus Chilled Water System extends down from Cornell to the cooling plant, where the warm campus water and the cold lake water flow next to each other inside heat exchangers. Metal plates separate the two water flows, but allow the exchange of heat from the campus water to the lake water. The campus chilled water is pumped back to Cornell and the slightly warmer lake water is returned to a shallow part of Cayuga Lake. Lake source cooling as an idea really is not a new concept. Using a body of water for heat rejection has been around since the Industrial Revolution. And the idea of using Cayuga Lake has been around for decades. The campus chilled water system started in 1963. And even at that point, a professor on campus had the idea of potentially using Cayuga Lake as a heat sink instead of using refrigeration, which is what we used for the 30 years uh, before Lake Source Cooling was built. The Lake Source Cooling heat exchange facility is the center of the system. From this point, two and a half miles from here is the center of the Cornell campus. And two and a half miles away in the lake, an intake pipe begins 250 feet below the surface of the lake. Where we're standing right now is known as the wet well in this facility. It's basically a 250,000 gallon swimming pool that the lake water comes in and out of. The pumps that move the water through this plant pull water out of the wet well and the intake water comes in and falls into the wet well by gravity because the wet well level is lower than the lake when we're running. The plant is designed so that at our full flow rate, a seven foot elevation difference between the lake and the wet well level will bring 30,000 gallons per minute of water into the building. The water is pumped through three pumps that have vertical columns reaching 35 feet almost to the bottom of this big well of water. And they push the water up and into the plant through the heat exchangers and then it falls by gravity through the return line that's over our head, comes down, goes right through the wall and goes out into the lake. Behind me is where the campus chill water system water comes into the plant. It comes through an enormous anchor block that's buried and built into this building that locks the chilled water piping at that location. And the reason for that is there's two and a half miles of distance from here back to campus of steel pipe. And when we cool it down going into operation, it wants to shrink and pull on this building. And instead of pulling on the building and the piping inside, it pulls on a 90 cubic yard block of concrete. Construction of the chilled water piping took six months. It involved five miles of pipe supply and return over a two and a half mile distance. The reason this pipe is steel, unlike the lake water piping, which was made out of high density polyethylene plastic, is that the high pressure of the chilled water it needs to be contained, and the steel provides enough strength to do that. The flow of chilled water comes through the building and then into the heat exchangers, and then goes upstairs to our chilled water pumps that push it back to campus. The chilled water pumps don't have to lift the water up to campus. The water coming down the hill balances with the water going up the hill. The purpose for the pumps is just to overcome friction inside the piping as the water moves from the campus to the heat exchange facility and back again. 
These are the heat exchangers that form the heart of the system. They're kind of like a radiator in your car where heat is rejected to the environment. The campus chilled water is a little bit warmer than the lake water. The campus chilled water comes back to us at 55 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. The lake water comes into the plant at 39 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So we can cool the campus chill water down to 45 degrees plus or minus, which is cold enough to pull heat from our buildings and bring it down here where it can then be rejected to the lake. The design for these heat exchangers is called a plate and frame heat exchanger. They're built by sandwiching 656 plates vertically together in a frame each plate has holes in it and gaskets in it so that the lake water comes in the bottom and goes up one side of plates and the chilled water comes in the top and goes down the other side. The two water flows never mix. They only come into close proximity to each other. At any given time, the number of heat exchangers running is a function of how much flow is going through the building. At our maximum flow, all six heat exchangers are running. One of the beauties of lake source cooling is its simplicity. It has so many fewer parts than the conventional chiller alternative that we replaced. In fact, most of the time, there's no one in this facility. It's an unpeopled facility, automated and monitored from three and a half miles away. Over on the wall is uh, instrumentation that then communicates back to campus via a fiber optic link that's uh, a distance of three and a half miles away, but because the speed of light is so fast, the operators basically feel like they're right here in the building. Lake source cooling is an investment by Cornell in the future of cooling the campus. The extra expense for lake source cooling versus replacing all of our campus chillers will be paid back in a 10 to 13 year time period. Since the university has been around for 135 years and only had cooling for the last 35, we think that was a wise investment in the future something that the university will benefit from for many generations to come. Three years of environmental research, study, and analysis resulted in an environmental impact statement that was able to explain the project and its impacts on the lake as an alternative to the much greater environmental impacts for using conventional cooling. That three-year effort cost the university almost $5 million before a decision was made to pursue lake source cooling. Many protective measures are in place to make sure that lake source cooling has an absolute minimum impact on the lake environment. At the intake, a screen is located over the intake to make sure that small fish cannot get in with the water flow coming into the plant. In addition, there's a very low wattage light bulb at that location to keep tiny freshwater shrimp away from the intake area. We had to promise to the community and to the DEC that we wouldn't use any chemicals to control zebra mussels, which is the normal way to do that. The two piping pieces, the intake and the outfall, we've designed to be able to basically accommodate the growth of the zebra mussels, and then we'll mechanically clean them using a, a pipeline pig. It's basically a foam bullet Periodically, we'll push that through both the outfall pipe in the normal flow direction, and we can also reverse the plant flow and push the pig out the intake pipe backwards from normal flow um, and basically scrub out the zebra mussels, put them back in the lake where they came from. We're not aware of anyone designing a plant from the beginning with uh, a pigging process and a full reverse flow capability in the building so that we can actually bring water in the out and push it out the in. The return water going back to the lake goes through an outfall pipe that ends about 500 feet offshore. The last 100 feet of the return line has a diffuser section, small diameter nozzles that distribute the water over a wide area, kind of like a sprinkler. In that area of the lake, the water is about 14 feet deep. So when our flow is highest for cooling buildings in the summertime, the area where we're returning water is naturally quite warm in the range of 65 to 70 degrees. Our return water at that time is about 55 degrees Fahrenheit. It's actually quite a bit colder than the area that we're returning it. Even though we're adding heat to the water, it's going back in an area of the lake that's quite a bit warmer. 
We're taking an enormous amount of lake data as part of the operation of the Lake Source Cooling Project. That data now uh, complements six years of data before Lake Source Cooling began operation. An unexpected benefit is that we learned so much new information about Cayuga Lake. It's now proving invaluable in the local and regional planning that's going on to preserve and protect Cayuga Lake for generations to come.